Currently, history textbooks adopted in Japanese schools teach that Japan, following the Greater East Asian War, was an evil nation which invaded Asia. The teachings of these textbooks are excessively one-sided. In truth, the overlapping of various events composes this history. Even though it is impossible for us to recognize all elements of history, it is important to form a well-balanced understanding of it. We require a historical perspective that fairly analyzes true historical facts. In other words, we must avoid a simplistic bias which paints Japan as totally evil or totally good. Modern Japanese history began when Commodore Matthew Perry arrived at the Uraga Harbor with his fleet of black ships. Commodore Perry demanding the opening of Japan to trade and his appearance greatly shocked the nation. Japanese people were forced to implement reforms and the Meiji Restoration took place. Japan took its place among the world's powers by enacting a policy of increasing national prosperity and military power. The rapid modernization of Japan created jealousy among the other powerful nations, and Japan was subjected to ill treatment. Japan fought the Japanese Sino War and the Japanese Russo War out of concern for Russian aggression in Manchuria and the Korean Peninsula. Even as other Asian nations were colonized and invaded by Western powers, Japan was the only nation to continually resist the imperialism of the West. Now let's unravel history in order to form an authentic understanding of modern Japanese history. Were the wars fought by Japan truly wars of aggression? In order to recognize historical facts objectively, we shall examine how non-Japanese perceived these wars. We shall start by discussing the book Behind the News in China written by American journalist Frederick Vincent Williams. His book was published in 1938. It was not a work of historian, but a documentary report of the American news correspondent who wrote for the American readers from the on-site. Williams described the issues vividly, how the conflict was going on between Japanese army and Chiang Kai-shek in Manchuria, Manchuria had been unstable since the Boxer Rebellion in 1900, and the military forces of global powers were stationed in the area. From Japan, the Kwangtung Army had been stationed. Conditions in Manchuria at the time are described as follows in a passage from Behind the News in China. Japan knew too well the sloth and weakness of the Chinese masses at large and the treachery and greed of the Chinese warlords. Japan had driven the warlords and their hired gangster armies out of Manchuria and made of that country a territory. It was so envied by the northern Chinese that thousands of them sought yearly to cross the borders of Manchukuo and work there for the higher wages and with a greater degree of comfort and security. Manchuria thus became Manchukuo. The new Manchukuo was a constant eyesore and a thorn in the side of Chiang Kai-shek and the Chinese warlords in his camp, as well as to the China Reds and the Russian Bolshevik. For Manchukuo, from an impoverished Manchuria, had taken on the status of a happy and prosperous empire. Despite this, worldwide propaganda emphasized that Japan was oppressing the Manchurians under a puppet government. 
However, under Japan's domination, no doubt, this Manchukuo Empire would prosper. The contrast between clean and busy cities and villages and well-ordered life and modern railroads in Manchukuo and the misery, poverty and disorder in China proper would cast reflection on not only the Nanking government but the Soviet in Russia as well whose own house was far from in order. The two passages above describe Manchukuo as seen through the eyes of Williams. He also made the following observations. Plotting to drag America into a war with Chiang Kai-shek, the Chinese Reds secretly initiated events such as the Huang Gutong incident and the Marco Polo Bridge incident, casting blame upon the Japanese military. Even when provoked by such foul action, the Japanese exercised their national trait of fortitude, never appealing their plight to the world and refusing to engage the Chinese in battle. Williams also alluded to numerous incidents in which Japanese citizens were slaughtered. If they had happened to the nationals of any other nation, the news would have been flashed to the world, and the world would have shrunk in horror, and the nation whose nationals had been murdered would have taken immediate action. But the Japanese are poor propagandists. Japan, to the surprise of the foreigners in China, did not act quickly. Japan knew the Chinese government had perpetrated in the trap of Russian communists, she knew that since the Western nations had closed the markets of the world to her products, she must do business in North China. And the Japanese government, frankly, did not want to war with China. China's government, as Japan knew, was lost in the web of Bolshevism from Russia. Yet Japan did not wish to fight the people of China, because China was her neighbor and must be her customer if she, Japan, were to live. As shown in his writings, Williams was frustrated at how reports circulated in America were based on an incorrect understanding of actual conditions, being deceived by the propaganda of the communists, Chiang Kai-shek of the Nationalist Party, and the behind-the-scenes conniving of Madame Chiang Kai-shek. Williams was angered at how his native country of America was being dragged into a messy war by incorrect reports. He also wrote in detail at the start of the Battle of Shanghai. The battle has begun. But before the shots were fired, Already, the Moscow and European propaganda agencies, as well as the Chinese press agents, were at work. The world was informed by them that a united and aroused China faced the invader. From the start of the conflict, Japan was cast as the evil aggressor through malicious propaganda. Despite facing overwhelming odds, 2,500 Japanese soldiers held off Chiang Kai-shek's force of 100,000 soldiers for an entire week. Chiang Kai-shek's forces used a bomber to obliterate the Cathay Hotel and Palace Hotel, slaughtering large numbers of foreigners and Chinese citizens of their own race and blood. Around the same time, this staged photograph of a child being slaughtered by a soldier looked like Japanese was taken. Any man who has ever been with the Chinese and the Japanese armies and is familiar with their uniform recognized at a glance that the pictured soldier was in fact from Chiang Kai-shek's forces. But how many Americans ever saw a Chinese or Japanese soldier? The photograph was published in America's Life magazine, arousing the sympathy of 130 million American citizens. It fueled the belief for the cruelty of the Japanese army 
and succeeded in generating massive anti-Japanese sentiment. Propagandists deceived America by taking advantage of how American citizens were unable to distinguish between one of Chiang Kai-shek's soldiers and a Japanese soldier, creating a countless number of fake photographs. Surprisingly, Williams's writings were published under the title of Behind the News in China in 1938, immediately after the Battle of Shanghai. Nevertheless, the articles of forged Japanese bad guys theory had been washed away on Western news media in general. Furthermore, together with Ralph Townsend, Frederick Vincent Williams was arrested and imprisoned after the start of the war between America and Japan. The men were charged with having disseminated information that was advantageous to Japan 